So what's Black and Blue about? Well, I think it's in the vein of those movies like Thug, <laughs> The Hate You Give. And I also think it may be a movie that I'm excited about coming out called Queen and Slim. It's about the breakdown and mistrust between black and police interaction. Now I'm Paul, and this is Black and Blue Explained, A Christian Perspective. Now you can see this from the very beginning of the movie. It's a, a pretty heavy handed movie, man. I mean, it's not gonna cut any shots. It's gonna talk about what it talks about. Now it does have a motor that's gonna drive where the director's trying to take us to, uh, but the water, the boat, everything around it, the scenery, it is all about police and black interaction between each other. And so we get this really quickly. Whenever it first starts out, the movie shows the main actress, Alicia West, as she's running or jogging, exercising in the morning, and she's in a hoodie. And then some police officers come up behind her and pull her over and start harassing her, talking about, why are you in my neighborhood, and things like that. And then finally, they get her ID and they look and see she's a police officer. And they say, oh, you know how it goes, you know how it goes. And so right then, we already know what this movie is gonna talk about and the direction it's taking us. Now, the director gets a little bit closer when uh, Alicia begins to uh, start her daily routine as a police officer with her partner. They start driving through and they notice some rundown houses See, West hasn't been around in about 10 years. She's been off in the military and uh, I think Iraq war or something like that. And she's come back home to try and make a difference in her community. And she thought the best way maybe to do that was to be a police officer. And so when she noticed these houses that have been run down, she talks about how that used to be this place or that used to be that place. And he said, yeah, her partner, he said, yeah, this is the, the place has gone down pretty bad. And they even ride by these projects like an apartment place and they say police, or police don't even respond to calls there. They don't even go in there because it's been so bad. He said, there's nobody good that lives there. Now Alicia responds and says, there are people, just some that have come on hard times and just don't know what to do and are trying to find their way out. I think this scene is trying to show us a couple of things. One, <clears throat> excuse me, is that uh, it's a perspective of how police officers look. So as we watch this movie, I believe it's trying to show us maybe why, like a glimpse into why uh, police officers see uh, um, blacks the way they see them. Because it seems like that in the hood type areas that there's nothing but gangs, drugs, and abuse. Now I think it's even getting broader than that because in the media, TV and all these things, blacks get portrayed as being a hood or, or thug type character. And I believe this is wrong. Now, each person is an individual. And see this movie, like he said, they just lump everybody into that one category when people are individuals. And they should respect each person as such. And when we lose the sight of an individual as potentially being good, each person potentially being good, then we lose the hope of ever being able to be reconciled together. Now the second thing is that there are people that are good in these areas, and Alicia, the police officer, is a proof of it. Now we don't really get to uh, uh, delve into her past, but they do give us some clues, which I would I would have wished that they would have just came out clearly and said that she was from this area, this particular part of town, and that she was bad and she became good because of her life choices. But they didn't. They just gave a little mask and you have to catch into it. But we realize this whenever they get her file and they see that she had a, a little bit of delinquency in her past. And then also she had a friendship with a, a girl that's still there in that hood. But we see that Alicia has come out strong with a good moral compass from a place that people would say nothing good comes from. And I believe that if we begin to see things like that, because we just need help. We need love. We need care. It's not about money. It's about wanting to do something better. Wanting to change. Now we continue on and we see that uh, 
we get another view. We kind of get a view of the uh, uh, black, black male in this situation during that. We get Milo, and Milo calls the police. He asks the police to come. Even though the whole time he says, I don't want this at my door, I don't want to see police officers coming around here, I don't want to do that, because uh, uh, black men and women have a bad view of police officers because of the things that have been going on, not only now, but historically, between blacks and police officers. And so it's hard to be able to even call one up but it's a necessary evil, as some would state it, because they still are the sword for the government. They are the way in which things get taken care of. Justice prevails. And so in this movie, when, when Milo calls the police officers to come down, instead of responding and asking, what, what do you need? What happened, man? How can we help you? He is assumed to be the vandal and gets pushed down and uh, assaulted or harassed. And you could see the pain in Milo's eyes as he begins to, to tear up because he knows that this could be his last moment on earth if they just feel like he does something wrong or act like he moves in a certain way that his life could be quickly taken. But with all of these standards, which um, the director wants to see, what a police officer sees when he sees uh, uh, the African-American community and then what the African-American community sees when they see police officers, he still has a vision of hope. One person that shines through, which is Alicia, who spans both areas as a police officer and as an African-American woman, a black woman. You see, whenever she captures the corrupt police officers in this movie, and then she restores that relationship she used to have with the person uh, uh, that was in that hood with her when she was a kid, it's a ring of, of hope, a vision of goodness that can come for one person, one person that decides to do something different. The thing about the movie is they make it so beautiful because it's a black woman as a police officer. So I believe the director is saying that it takes both sides to be able to do this. She says in the movie, she says that I know that this ain't going to change everything, but it's one step and we have to be the change that we wish to see. So me, myself, I have to be a change in this world in order to do this rec uh, racial reconciliation, this police reconciliation, as well as the police officers. They have to be that one person that doesn't look at a black boy or a black girl and see hood, thug, but instead sees an individual that could loves and has a family, and that it would treat them as an individual rather than a collective whole. Because one person can make a change. Or the question is, can one person make a change? Well, I'll tell you one person that has already made a change. And that person is Jesus Christ. You see, when he came to earth and died a death, as a perfect human being died a death and then rose again. He destroyed all of the barriers. Matter of fact, in Ephesians it says that he destroyed the wall or barrier of hostility. Now when he's talking about that, he's speaking of the temple. See, the temple that the uh, Jewish people would come in and offer sacrifices and uh, worship God, well there was a, a wall around it and the Jews could enter into the inner court, but the outer court was reserved for the um, Gentiles, which means people that aren't Jewish. And so those that entered into the inner courts could only be Jews. And so the ones in the outer court were, were ostracized or kept from worship. But see, when Christ died and rose, it said that he broke this barrier down that now all are free to enter in. And he said they have broken the barrier of wall of hostility and enter into the new man. And so it says that Jesus created or really reinstated what was affirmed from the very beginning, a new race. This race is the Christian. It was what it was supposed to be from the very beginning, that it's the human race, that we're all humans rather than 
changed or looked at differently depending on our skin color. Now this is all happens through faith. Faith that when Christ did those things that he saved us from our sins first as well as destroyed this wall and this barrier. And further proof of that is the faith because the only way that we can enter into this salvation is by believing that he has done it. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're rich, you're poor, white, you're black, high standing, low standing. All that matters is that you believe that what Christ did gives you salvation. So it erases any division, any division and places us all on an equal playing field. Now, when we start to, to listen to what Christ says about those things, that's when we start beginning reconciliation between all races. We begin to see that the value of a person is not based on what job they have, how much money they make, their skin color, or whatever ability that they have but it's in the fact that they are a human being made in the image of God. Well, I thank you guys for watching, and I pray that reconciliation between all men happen, and it will happen when we look to God, to Christ, and seek to follow after Him. And in doing so, we begin to respect each other as individuals, but also as a loving brother and sisterhood under the lordship and the king of the world man i hope that you guys keep watching movies and keep seeing jesus <laughs>